Welcome to the second Brands for Good uh, panel, uh, which is with Power uh, Europe, which is great. Um, and uh, we are looking forward for a great discussion as well here at the ISPO 2021 show in Munich. Brands for Good is a platform where we present sustainable product solutions and social projects of the outdoor sports industry. My name is Frank Loser, and I'm really delighted to have three great panelists here with me and uh, we would like to introduce them to you as well. Yes, a happy welcome and uh, to our Protect Our Winters Europe Fridays for good session here at the ISPO 2021. And Pascal, we want to start with you for, with a short introduction, please. Thanks, Frank. Hi, everyone. Happy to uh, be here and being at ISPO again. Um, this time I will um, work, um, I'm here to support uh, PAO uh, Europe because we work together under 1% for the Planet framework. And I'm a funder, the founder and consultant of OANA Public Affairs, so helping businesses and organizations when it comes to sustainability uh, policies in Europe. Great, thank, uh, thanks Pascal so much. Florian, please introduce yourself as well. Um, yeah. Hello, hello everyone, and thanks for having me. So I'm Florian from the French brand Picture. I'm in charge of the sustainability aspect of the brand. So uh, in other words, my work is to always improve our um, historical, uh, environmental and social commitments. And personally, I'm largely inspired by uh, climate scientists, by energy engineers. So basically the IPCC conclusions um, and other uh, reports from experts, I, I, I try to drive the, cli the climate and the carbon strategy of the brand thanks to all of those contents. Um, and also an important part of my work consists also in using uh, our voice as a company to make climate topics uh, easier to understand for, for everyone. So yeah, basically this is uh, what I'm doing at Picture. Oh, great. We are looking forward to going more into detail in the next couple of minutes. Søren, uh, not only my co-moderator, uh, also a close uh, partner of Brands for Good from Protect Our Winters Europe. Søren, please. Hi, Frank. Hi, Pascal. Hi, Florian. Great to be here. I'm very excited about this opportunity to, to have this discussion with you. And yes, my name is Søren Ronge. I work as the European Coordinator for Protect Our Winters Europe. Uh, I've been on the job for about half a year and I have a background in development cooperation and in climate. And uh, I, I, I saw this job description just after ISPO 2020 and it really resonated with me because I've been working a lot in the global south. And I was just super excited to get back to work uh, with winter when I get back to my hometown of Innsbruck and, uh, and to push uh, for the work of Protect Our Winters. So I'm really excited to be here. And uh, yeah, I think uh, before we dive into the panel discussion, Maybe I'd like to just go into a little bit of a short history of who POW is. Uh, as maybe many of you know, POW Europe was launched during ISPO 2020. We presented the launch of our 2020-2023 uh, strategy plan. And uh, so it's, it's really excited to be here representing POW from my side. And for those who don't know us, who I don't hope are so many, uh, who is Protect Our Winters? POW was founded in 2007 by professional snowboarder Jeremy Jones, basically because he, during decades, noticed that the snow is changing, climate change is having impacts on our snow cover, and uh, he also realized there's not really any organization in place to mobilize the outdoor community, to unify the outdoor community in their voice to take action. So he decided to, to found POW, and uh, this was in 2007, now we're in 2021. POW has grown to be an international uh, climate organization. We're now present all over the, the planet. We do have nine organizations in Europe and about 150,000 uh, people following POW, 200 athletes in our alliance. And yeah, what do we do? Basically, uh, we try to unite uh, the community of athletes, of creatives, of forward-thinking businesses, to uh, affect systemic change and solutions to climate change. And our goal is to turn passionate outdoor people into effective climate advocates, supporting them through our alliances, through the Science Alliance, through the Athletes Alliance, and by running political campaigns to affect systemic change. And basically our uh, strategy consists out of three main policy areas, which are 
uh, introducing renewable energies, putting a price onto carbon, and introducing low carbon mobility solutions. And uh, yeah, in short, um, as I said, we are present in nine countries in Europe. We also have Power Europe, who is the umbrella organization, who is trying to coordinate all the great work that is being done on national level by our different chapters, uh, and to be the centralized point of engagement for our partners and for the outdoor community when it comes to uh, policy on European level. So uh, don't, do not drag it out too much. I think we really want to hear from the panel. Uh, in summary, we are here now uh, and we are here to stay. And uh, we're really excited to, to work with partners also from business. And this is the idea of the panel today. So with this, back to you, Frankie, and let's get into it. Perfect, yeah. Our uh, subject today is moving mountains with business. Where is the outer industry's voice on climate policy? We want to go for, we want to look at four aspects of this subject. We want to go for the what, the when, the how, and the devil in detail. And um, yeah, let's start with the what. I hand over to you, Søren, again for the first subject. Exactly. So I would like to, to start uh, posing this question to Pascal to basically set the scene and talk a little bit about where are we today uh, with uh, climate policy in Europe. Uh, 2020 was quite an important year uh, in the European Union. It ended with a decision by the European Council to set an emissions reductions goal of 55% by uh, 2030. Now 2021 will be about introducing the legislation and introducing the reforms and regulations that are needed to implement this strategy until 2030. So I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what's coming for us uh, during the next years and especially in 2021 and how does this affect the, the outdoor industry? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for the question. Indeed, 2021 is the year if you want to influence uh, EU policies. Um, as you were saying, in 2020 was more the framing. What do we want to achieve in 2021 till I would say 2023? Because you all know policies can take a bit uh, of time to be defined. Um, it's really those, I would say, three years are going to be the key ones if you want to influence uh, and you really need to be active as in the outdoor industry. And the reason why is that the European authorities are laying down all the policies that are supporting that goal of 50. Uh, 5 percent reduction by 2030 and climate neutrality. So it's circular economy, for example. I'm just thinking of picture of any other product that will be put on the market. Um, there is, for example, the revision of the EU uh, eco-design directive. So the goal is really to make sure that only sustainable product would be put on the market. So the design of your skis, for example, or your jacket will have to be reviewed based on those criteria. Uh, biodiversity is going to be key. Uh, climate, obviously, there is renewable energy, energy efficiency, and the uh, carbon uh, border adjustment mechanism. Uh, we might talk about it. And from a general perspective, there is taxonomy and due diligence. So I think if you have never been involved and you want to be involved, like start now, um, it's really the right moment because the Commission is really wanted to hear from the industry and NGOs, and it's now that they want to gather the info. So between now and mid-2021. Thank you, Pascal. I think that was an amazing summary of very much information in, in very few words. So thanks so much for setting the scene and, and talking a little bit about the what. Uh, so the next, uh, I, the next question I would also like to pose to you and a little bit more about the when, maybe. But, uh, and trying not to get too technical, because I guess for a lot of our audience, it might uh, be new terms. But uh, as you already mentioned a little bit, uh, we will see the introduction of the taxonomy. We will see the introduction of the carbon border adjustment mechanism. We will see uh, the sustainable product initiative. So I think these are all areas that could somehow affect the outdoor industry. And maybe, uh, yeah, without getting too technical, could you talk a little bit about this and what you foresee uh, as consequences or importance for the outdoor industry and outdoor brands? Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll try to make it easy to understand. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, so taxonomy is, um, let's start with one of the most complicated. Uh, so taxonomy is actually uh, the framework that uh, EU uh, authorities wants to have 
to define what is a sustainable activity and a sustainable investment. Meaning that for, at the beginning, everybody thought it was for financial authorities, uh, but it's actually for everybody. Um, and so they will define what it means an, act, an environmental activity. So looking at climate, biodiversity, circular economy. So that might need, uh, mean, sorry, for companies that they will have to review the definition of what is environmental activities and what is environmental investment. So if you have investors interested in your products, they might change what they are asking you. Um, and also if you report on uh, environmental investment as a company, you might need to change the way you report on them and what you consider uh, environmental investment. So that could, for, for example, impact if you invest in renewable energies that could uh, might change uh, the approach. Uh, important to know that um, at the moment, not all industries are covered. For example, textile industry, I'm more, I'm more um, uh, let's say an expert in textile industry, is not covered by that at the moment, but they, they are creating a framework where all industry can be added in the long term. So it's interesting to keep that in mind for you guys. And there are, discussing with the industry at the moment. Uh, when it comes to the carbon border adjustment mechanism, it's the goal of this law is basically to put a price on carbon leakage. So if uh, your industry or your company is, um, yeah, uh, outsourcing your activities from outside the EU, that's really where they want to, to put a price on. Um, it's still having lots of discussion with WTO, how it will happen, but they really want to make sure that you cannot go away, get out of the EU because the EU is getting really climate um, active and not to, you know, like uh, phase out and not being compliant. Um, and when it comes to products, because most of the um, companies listening to ISPO uh, this week, you put products on the market, as I mentioned earlier, on, there will be some eco-design requirements on your products. So really shifting everything and looking into carbon uh, footprint of your products. So yeah, it's coming up in uh, 2021 uh, before it was only on energy related products. So that's really a huge shift at, at least for the textile industry is really gonna change a lot of things they will look into. Reuse, recyclability, um, durability, obviously chemicals content. So it's gonna be quite a change and so if you want to be involved and make the really drive the change, uh, it's the right time to, to engage. Thanks a lot. Um, and uh, Florian, you with picture, you are definitely involved. You are well known as a really green company. Um, and uh, so move over to the role of business. What are the concerns within your company or maybe the industry as well about being more vocal, more loud, being more political? to, to uh, push that subject as well forward as what we heard now from Pascal? Uh, yeah, it's, it's clearly a part of the plan to be more vocal, more um, political. And clearly we have no problem saying everyone that uh, they should vote for the political parties who will act very seriously on climate I think it's our role as a company and uh, even if we are not super big, uh, we have uh, 60 employees, we have a good community on social networks, uh, we have press relationships that can touch many people. So, I, I mean, let, let's do this. Um, and in a way, this is something we, um, we are starting to do with for Europe and France to be more vocal and more active on that um, political aspect. And uh, I would add that uh, in France, we have a think tank called the Shift Project, which is working on a plan to, uh, to decarbonate our economy in France. So all sectors are concerned. Uh, we are talking about transport, we are talking about buildings, about agriculture, about the whole industry. So it's pure lobby. And uh, this uh, decarbonation plan will be ready for our next uh, national election in 2022. And uh, the, 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 the target of the chief project is clearly to influence uh, the coming election, 
with such a plan. So this think tank has a, a strong relationship with companies and the B2B world. And um, personally, I believe a lot in what they do. And even if it's not promoting doing growth, that's the reality of the plan. And uh, it, is, it is what makes it uh, super interesting to me. So yeah, when it's time, so approximately in two years, and at picture, we'll have no problems pushing the plan and communicating about it and seeing everyone that, uh, yeah, they should vote for the most committed political parties, uh, which is the one um, which will act on climate. Okay, Florian, you, you said you, you already have done some things to being more loud, more being active, and you, and maybe afterwards, uh, Pascal, you as well, give us one or two more examples what you have done uh, in concrete. Um, so far, we didn't did much, actually, in terms of being more vocal, being more um, political um, committed. It's much more about where, what we are going to do with power, for example. And also, we, of course, we are using our voice and communication, communication tools to talk about all this. And more and more, we love to talk about topics that at first sight have no direct links with, with what we do. But at the end, we make people understand that it's all connected. So for example, transportation. Uh, we made a, a movie about that uh, two years ago. Uh, the name was Shelter, about, about low carbon mobility in the mountains. So we, we, we've partnered up with Pau about that movie. And of course, transportation is a, is a big topic uh, when it comes to skiing, snowboarding, because it makes the, the biggest impact uh, in terms of greenhouse gases emissions when you want to reach the mountains. So clearly partnering uh, more and more with Pau Europe is one of the solutions we found to be more involved at uh, this level. And um, we also need to, I think, to, to talk more with engineers in low carbon energy. Those guys are part of the solutions, clearly. And what they know, what they can bring is perfectly in line with what we need when it comes to reduce our emission, when it comes to talk more and more and more about energy in the textile industry and basically in uh, every industry in the world. So, yeah, so far, I, I would say that we, we have not been that uh, influential and, and that present when it was, um, yeah, when it comes to, uh, to, to be political, but clearly it's going to change that picture. Okay, thank you. I want to hand over to you, uh, Pascal, because the, 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 maybe companies like Picture need support from the government side. What do you think about that? Should there be more power from that side? Like yeah, group, I, like I, whatever? Yeah. No, I definitely, sorry for cutting you. Uh, I definitely agree with uh, that companies need Usually we see companies as, you know, like the one that needs to drive uh, the change. But if you don't have the right legislation supporting them, you know, leverage, leveraging the playing field, uh, this is not going to happen. So now that we have bold goals at EU level, national uh, uh, authorities need also to follow that. It's a bit too easy, you know, to just wait for the EU to come up. But um, I would say national governments, but also local um, authorities, so cities, uh, also need to be there and be active. Um, I know that Pau Europe is, you know, working at local level. Why not engaging with members of the European Parliament that are from the region of the mountains that can bring really that um, message from ANSI, which is really like quite big in the skiing and really reaching those guys so they can bring the business pro progressive business voice into you know the european uh, sphere um, i think that's really that's connection between companies uh, national and local uh, policy makers will make even more sense because at eu level they really hear uh, what members of the european parliament are saying and if you bring athletes or people that are famous that brings another voice, another, you know, dimension that really helps and really 
2021 is the time to do that. So I know it's also part of Power Europe uh, action plan and it's, it's perfect timing. Okay, thanks a lot. Surin, um, I think because time is running like hell, um, like every time, maybe we go to the question because uh, Power is doing such a lot of things, what Pascal already mentioned. Do you like to add some on the uh, examples which Pascal mentioned already? What are you doing with Power to support companies like Picture and all the other big companies you are partner with? Yes, I'd, I'd love to. And uh, thanks for, uh, for both of your comments, Florian and Pascal, which I think is, is very spot on. And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, exactly what we're trying to do as POW is to help companies to, to find a platform where they can start becoming vocal. At POW, we do work together with a strong science alliance. We make sure that everything we do and everything we work with is based on the best available science. So we do get a lot of input also from experts such as Pascal, for example to help us to guide our policy work. And then we try to make sure that we can give a, a voice to companies by helping us in implementing these kind of advocacy campaigns that we have. So one concrete example would be the Lead the Way campaign that we just had at the end of last year, where um, we had a variety of actions that were supported by the companies, uh, not only through talking to their athletes and, and, and inspiring their athletes to take part in this kind of campaigning, using their voice by speaking up to their community and their followers, but also by uh, joining us in signing off on a joint letter to the European heads of state, to the European president of the European Council, to European ministers of climate and environment. Uh, and this letter was signed uh, by Picture, for example, but by 14 uh, of the major outdoor brands in Europe, it was signed by 55 outdoor athletes. So I think just by giving uh, this kind of tools to companies, it makes it a little bit easier. And by informing them about what is happening on European policy level, where do we see the need to engage and, uh, and just to making sure that we really unite the voice of the outdoor community. And this is not only reduced to outdoor brands, of course, but it's also including outdoor enthusiasts, it's including the athletes, it's including the broader community as a whole, but to show that we have a word to say, we are a, a sector that has a lot of influence. And obviously we have an intrinsic interest in protecting the outdoors because we all depend on it. Our motivations might be different, but at the end, this is what it all comes down to. And I think uh, that's what we can do with POW. And we always encourage our partners to speak up. There is sometimes a little bit of hesitation. Uh, people have uh, this kind of fear uh, to speak up. They feel sometimes like, can I, I'm not a perfect advocate. Uh, can I actually speak up? Can I use my voice to, while my house is not in order? And I think this is also why we're having this discussion now because in, in power we believe a lot in, in uh, imperfect advocacy. You don't have to be perfect just to speak up. It's much more important that you do speak up because if you wait to be a perfect advocate, then we would have no advocates. So I think this is really important for us and at the heart of what we're doing. And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, it would be interesting to hear also maybe from, uh, from Florian, for example, do you think uh, uh, you have to be a perfect advocate to take action or, uh, and, and how, what would you like to see from Pau, for example, how do you think we could support you better in, in becoming vocal and taking action? Florian, it must be a short, it must be a short answer. I'm sorry for that because time is running out, but uh, hopefully you have the time enough. I'm sorry, it's two minutes now <laughs> remaining. Okay, let's do it two minutes. Uh, I, I personally think that personally think that yes, you can you can talk about uh, things you don't do good and uh, and I would say it's it's even better. Otherwise, we should always talk about things that work that would that would be so boring and and it would hide the, the reality. So, so clearly, and in the textile industry, nobody is perfect when it comes to energy and electricity. So let's. I'll talk about this, right? Uh, it will probably lead to collaboration, improvements, uh, actions, lobby. So, so yeah, and uh, and with the help of POW, we can clearly talk about all this, talk about transportation, talk about energy, talk about complicated topics that are crucial in the fight against climate change. And uh, a collaboration with such an NGO like POW, which uh, no, uh, not a topic, which not very right to the topics to me it's uh, it's really relevant and that's the way i want to work with uh uh with teacher and with power 
That's great. That's a, a perfect ending because uh, it, it fits so well because this is why I love to um, work with guys like you. Our slogan of Brands for Good is do good and talk about it because we are, as POW, are 100% sure that we have to inspire people, that we have to spread out good examples to inspire others, to show what are people like you, Florian, your company, um, you, Pascal, with um, consulting to uh, support companies who want to change something. So thanks a lot. And um, yeah, let's be as loud as possible because 2021 is especially the time to change something. Um, sorry that it's now a little bit interrupted, um, but time is running out. It was a pleasure to have you here. Soren, thanks a lot um, uh, for the cooperation again and uh, looking forward to seeing you as soon as possible. Take thanks care. Thank you, Frankie. Thanks. And yes, bye -bye. I hope that uh, we could inspire a lot of brands hearing this and listening into this, and we would be very happy to discuss together with the brands how we can all push it together to become climate advocates. Thanks so much, uh, Frank. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot.